Hey, it's Rick here, and I want to show you Apple's latest and greatest. That will be the revised Apple TV that you see here. This thing is incredibly small. It fits in the palm of my hand, as you can see. Uh, and it's very, very portable, very lightweight, and uh, there's no noise that comes out of this at all. So let's go ahead and take a look at it up close. We'll talk about what it does and whether it's worth your $99. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this device is very small. It comes shipped in this package that you see here. Uh, and inside the package, you're going to receive a user manual and some warranty information. The user manual is very straightforward. This device is incredibly easy to set up. And it should be because it's been targeted towards the mass market and the consumer for $99. This is the device, as I mentioned, it fits in the palm of your hand. It is very small, maybe slightly bigger than a hockey puck, and it weighs, I'd say, about the same if you've ever held a hockey puck in your hand. So it's pretty lightweight. Uh, it is very silent because there are no fans on it. So uh, once this thing is powered on, there is a small pinhole white light that comes on here. It's not overpowering, so it's not like an LED light that's going to blast you out. Um, but it's, you know, it's very quiet. It's very portable. Uh, it's a black on black design, kind of matte black on top, shiny black on the sides. And on the underside, it's got a matte black that's grippy. So if you set it on a table, it's not really going to go anywhere. It's got Wi-Fi built in, 802.11n. However, if you don't have that, you can use the Ethernet port that you see right here. It has optical audio. It has HDMI, a micro USB port, and then of course your power cord uh, area here. So this is really good for somebody, I would say, um, not just the average everyday user, but also a traveler. If you're a business traveler or somebody who's on the road a lot and you wanna bring your shows with you, this is a really good option, I would say. In addition to that, you're also going to get this remote that you see, and it's uh, a brushed aluminum remote. It feels real good in the hand, but make no bones about it. This is probably the bare minimum that you can get away with. It's got all of the feature functionality that you'd want to do with Apple TV, um, but things like searching, inputting titles, all of these things are going to be kind of painstakingly slow as you have to navigate through an on-screen keyboard with your arrows here. So it takes some time, and I would recommend that if you've got an iPad or if you have an iPhone that you download Apple's uh, Apple remote, it's free. And it just makes life so much easier with the Apple TV because you can do things like you get the slide up keyboard and then you just tap in uh, the info. So it makes a lot of uh, features easier. But if you don't, this definitely works. It's just going to be a little bit slower as you navigate through menus. You've got a menu button here. You've got a play and a pause uh, and just some other features as you would expect with the remote. Now, as we talk about Apple TV, um, there's a number of things that you can do with this. So you can rent movies and you can rent TV shows. Uh, usually HD movies from iTunes uh, are going to cost you about $4.99. Uh, there's also a library of movies that is available uh, for $3.99. Um, so it really ranges on when the movie comes out. Day and dates tend to be a little bit more than uh, movies that have been out for a while. And then standard deaf movies are going to run you about $2.99. You can also rent TV shows for $0.99. Cents. And there are a number of networks right now that are available, and Apple expects to expand the number of networks as time goes on. You can also stream Netflix, and you can stream YouTube. So if you've got Netflix, uh, this is a really nice device that allows you to stream content from Netflix to your TV or whatever device you're hooking this up to. And I've done this before with my PS3, I've done it with my Xbox, and I must say that the interface on this is very nice. It looks a heck of a lot nicer uh, in the menu selections. It gives you more functionality, at least in my opinion, than the Xbox and the PS3 do. So uh, I really like the interface that they've designed for Netflix on this. And if you're familiar with Netflix streaming on the PS3, or on the Xbox, there's some authentication steps that you have to take. That's not necessary here. All you need to do is uh, plug in your Apple TV. It'll ask you for your username and password for Netflix, and away you go. So there's no authentication code. So it's really nice in that respect. One of the things that I failed to mention that I'll mention here, the highest output on this as of today is 720p. So don't look for 1080p on this. It might come in a future release, uh, but that is not something that is available at this time. You can also stream iTunes content with this. So basically home sharing is something within iTunes that you can enable. And it basically makes every iTunes library on your home network available to use 
on other Macs or PCs or things like that. So you're able to, if you've got home sharing turned on, you can stream your iTunes content through this. You can also view photos uh, through this as well. Uh, you can view photos with the home sharing app, uh, or you can also uh, utilize it through MobileMe or through Flickr. So that's something else that you can do. Internet radio is available on this, and there's literally thousands of internet radio stations, and they're grouped by different genres of music. So country, uh, alternative, rock, different uh, types of styles of music. Now there is no search feature right now for music stations, so you kind of have to go through uh, select, let's say, alternative, and then just scroll through the list. But uh, the internet radio stations work really well. Now, there is something else called AirPlay, and Apple will be introducing um, AirPlay right now. It's slated for November with the iOS 4.2 update. And basically what AirPlay is going to allow you to do is it'll allow you to enable or start, let's say, a song or a video on your iPad, uh, let's say, for example, and then play that back to your TV through Apple TV. So AirPlay is coming, and when that is available on this, that's going to be an additional uh, feature. So uh, a lot of different features. Um, it is very intuitive. It is very easy to use. Um, I'd say this, again, is catered towards the mass market, so you're not going to have a lot of difficulty setting this up and getting it to work. Um, it has an undocumented feature of about 8 gigabytes of storage built in. We don't really know the reason for that right now. Some are saying that it could be for buffering of movies so that they don't stutter as you're watching them. And I haven't experienced any stuttering uh, as it stands today. And I've got about a 10 up, 10 down um, DSL connection uh, today. So just to give you an idea on that. Um, but there's also other speculation that in the future they might open up uh, the App Store for this. So who knows? But anyways, that is Apple TV. It's going to run you about $99. Uh, definitely something to consider. Uh, if you're looking for uh, kind of cloud-based media capabilities overall, movies, pictures, uh, things like that. So if you've got any questions, please let me know. I'll be more than happy to answer them for you. Take care.